Vsauce, I'm Jake, and if you could go back in time and stop yourself from being born, would you? Or should I say, can you? Because if you went back in time to stop yourself from being born, then you wouldn't be alive to then go back in time and stop yourself from being born. It's the retro suicide paradox, where it's something that you can do, but it doesn't mean that it's something that you can complete. Just like I can go to the store to buy an avocado, but it doesn't mean I'll actually leave the store with one. For time travel, the timeline self-corrects in a way. But actually, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's, let's travel back to the beginning. Vsauce! I'm Jake and time travel is a paradox itself, which means that any paradox created by the idea of time travel is a paradox in a paradox. It's the paradox paradox. Allow me to explain. With the retro suicide paradox, the idea is that things that have happened in the past are fixed points. They cannot be changed because changing them would change all of time coming after that past event. And since you going back in time needs to happen, there'd be no way to follow through with killing your younger self. But that's only if we assume that time is one straight line where the past dictates the present. And in the case of time travel, the present would also dictate the past. It's a self-fulfilling cycle. We can travel in any direction of space, but can we travel in any direction in time? Australia and China both exist, even though they don't exist right here with me in this location. So one could argue that yesterday and tomorrow exist, even though they don't exist right here, right now. But the fact is, yesterday and tomorrow don't exist. I can't revisit yesterday and I can't skip forward into tomorrow. Changing the hands on a clock changes your personal time, but not external time. External time is the rate at which time moves which is a constant, consistent rate. When it comes to time being relative, that is personal time. If you slow down the rate of your body to such a degree that every function of your being were affected, from your perspective, people would be whizzing by. But from everyone else's perspective, you would look frozen. However, external time is still moving at the same rate. It's just your perception that feels different. It is the time discrepancy paradox, where there has to be a difference between time and time, which we know there isn't. And in most time travel stories, it works like this. Subject A leaves point A and immediately goes back in time to point B. Then after doing what they need to do, they come back to point A. But this is where another more sinister paradox is created. If we go back to this timeline, when subject A goes back in time, only they go back. The version of them in the past, subject A2, is still moving towards point A when they go back in time, which means they have created a closed time loop. If subject A travels back to right when they left point A, subject A2 will already be going back to point B. That instance will occur forever. So every time you travel through time, you will always be creating a loop, no matter if you go into the past or if you go into the future, because you right now are time traveling, but you a day ago, you a year ago, isn't. That you is still moving up on the timeline to that fixed point you created, point A. So it also begs the question, does that mean that if you left that timeline at point A and went to the past, would you not exist in the present and moving forward or in the future? Time doesn't stop just because you aren't there. So instead of continuing your timeline, you've now imprisoned yourself or yourselves into a loop. It creates an infinite amount of you that resets every time you hit point A, because you take you in that moment in time. So it actually creates another paradox, the double occupancy paradox, which is how can there be more than one of your current self? We think of ourselves as one self. Also, side note, this brings up an additional paradox, which is the paradox of freedom. Let's say like in our scenario above, you, subject A, travel back in time from point A, thus creating a closed time loop where a version of you will always go back in time once they reach point A. You think that you were the one to choose to go back in time at that specific moment. But were you? If it is a closed time loop, then you might not be subject A, but more statistically possible is that you are subject A20 or A5000. So even though you felt like you had the freedom to choose that decision, it had already been decided for you. Okay, let's go back to that timeline and imagine something different. The most likely scenario is that only the present exists. The past is gone and the future has yet to be written. But as I mentioned earlier, the past has been written, so it could be that the past and present exist, but not the future. In this scenario, you could go back in time, since the past did, by all accounts, 
happen, you just wouldn't be able to change it. But if that were true, then so would the third scenario, which is most commonly thought of when thinking about time travel. That the past, present, and future all exist, and you can travel to any of them. But if this is true, then that would mean that all three, past, present, future, are happening concurrently. Think of it as three timelines running on top of one another. So when you go forward in time, it isn't on your timeline. It is on the timeline above you. And if you want to go into the past from the future, you'd intersect with the present, with your timeline. It's important to note that if you left the present to go into the future, you are now gone. So if you spend a week in the future, there is a week in the present where you just don't exist anymore. One of my favorite thought experiments about time travel is this. If time travel were to exist, then it has always existed as the physical machine can exist at all points in time. So even if it were invented a hundred years from now, it still exists now and since the beginning of time. And it is important to remember, even in the three timelines theory, that if you went back in time, you can see the past, but you can't interact with it. You can't change it because it would still disrupt the present and future timelines. However, there is another theory that allows time travel to not be a paradox, and by doing so, would also make it so no time travel paradox would be paradoxical. Now in this theory, if we revisit the first paradox we talked about, the retro-suicide paradox, you'd go back in time and you could in fact kill your younger self, and you would no longer exist on that timeline. But by doing that act, the timeline splits. So what was timeline one creates a timeline two. Timeline one has you go back in time and commit retro-suicide, while timeline two continues on as normal. Time has still self-corrected itself by making a new copy of events as they were supposed to be. That's timeline two, not as you made them, timeline one. If this were true, we could be living on any one of these timelines, a fracture from the time we knew to one we think we know, but we'd have no idea either way. That means that there are multiple timelines, an analogy in a sense for the multiverse theory, that there are parallel universes, and each time we travel through time, we aren't actually moving through three concurrent timelines or new timelines are being created, but actually we're traveling to a different universe that is similar to our own. And if that's the case, I need to keep traveling until I find the right one. And as always, thanks for watching. Oh good, we made it to my favorite universe, the Curiosity Box universe. If you don't know what the Curiosity Box is, it is something that Michael, Kevin, and I make every quarter. It's a quarterly subscription box, and it's filled with just incredible science toys. There's a book, there's a video game in here, there's also a t-shirt in every single box. And right now we have the best of edition available, which is our favorite things from all the past boxes that we've done. I would highly recommend getting it. It's something that we care about a lot. We design every single product in here, and a portion of the proceeds goes to Alzheimer's Research. So far we've donated over $100,000 to Alzheimer's Research, which is really, really cool. So, in the best of, I'm just gonna show you a few things that come in here. Don't wanna spoil it, but you get a Curiosity Box gyroscope. These are awesome, I love them. Michael has a video all about them. There's also this cipher wheel, which is really, really cool. You can encrypt and encode and decode secret messages. Michael actually designed this, it's awesome. And there's other stuff in here, not gonna tell you what it is, but one thing I will tell you, is that this t-shirt comes in the box. It's something that we designed ourselves. It's a Voyager 1 t-shirt. And check out the back, it's really cool. Ooh, yes. Voyager 1's intergalactic tour. All the sites that Voyager went to. It's really, really neat. So if you wanna get your own box, you can go click the link at the top of the description or go to curiositybox.com. We are really, really proud of this. Something that we spend a lot of time on and it's really a great way to support Vsauce as well as your brain and other brains through the Alzheimer's research donations. All right, that's all I got for you. I love you, and as always, thanks for watching. Ooh, oh, I'm going away. My knees are so old. <laughs>